Welcome to Thursday, March 11, 2021. Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. This is a redo. The first podcast we produced this morning had a little computer glitch that caused a delay between the voice and the graphics. Sorry about that. So we're going to try this again. First of all, what we're going to be looking at is this big storm for the weekend. Will it happen? That's always what you want to look at when you're this close. And the answer is yes, it's going to happen. We're just down the details now. Our confidence is very high. A major March storm is going to wallop parts of Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, maybe South Dakota, as well as parts of northwestern Kansas. It's just down to details now, sorting things out. It's tracking a little more north. Not a lot, but a little bit, but it could make a big difference in who gets the most snow out of this. Just a 20 or 30 or 50 mile change in the track could mean a lot of snow for you or just a little bit of snow. Big differences on the computer modeling between the snow amounts forecasted and what will happen likely in reality. And we'll show you those differences. We're also gonna show you the similarities to this incoming storm to a storm that I think a lot of you will remember, which was that 2003 March storm that happened between March 17th and 19th, 2003. A lot of folks in Colorado and Wyoming will remember that one where some parts of Colorado got over 80 inches of snow. We're gonna have really high impacts for travel and livestock. As we mentioned to stock growers yesterday, it's not a matter of if, it is just a matter of when and how much we get out of this storm. Very dangerous weather for young and weak livestock coming. This is the latest National Weather Service map showing the current advisories that are posted across the USA. And you can see here, the winter storm watch is posted for the incoming storm. We're likely gonna see this area of influence of this storm expand a little bit further as we go here into the next day or two, as the storm is gonna affect a large part, a lot of real estate of the Western United States. Here's a satellite photo this morning showing you where the upper level low is. Look at it, it's right here. Now, it doesn't look like much of a storm, does it? This is something we talked about yesterday. When these Pacific storms come in, they lose a lot of their punch and a lot of moisture because they hit the mountains, they hit the Sierra Nevada, they hit the basin and range of Nevada, and those mountains take up a lot of the moisture. So you gotta re-energize the storm as it gets closer to the divide. And that's what we talked about yesterday with having that moisture supply. Doesn't look like much on satellite imagery, but it's gonna blow up and look a lot more impressive here in a couple more days. You can see it on our upper level charts, the jet stream wind coming around and carving out that trough of low pressure with the upper level low centered just south of and near that San Francisco area. As we go forward though, look what happens. By Saturday morning, the storm is near the Four Corners, just west of Four Corners, right about centered over Page, Arizona. It's gonna take a while, a full day or two, to go from Central California to near that Four Corners area, basically all the way until Saturday morning. So that's not a lot of distance it's covering in two days. However, now we're gonna zoom in and take a closer look at where it is by Sunday morning. This is the European model. By Sunday morning, it's got the upper level low at 18,000 feet, you know, centered near the Lyman area. And look at the counterclockwise spin bringing a due east upslope wind into the northern front range of Colorado and southern Wyoming, deep upslope all the way to 30,000 feet. There are differences though in the models. This is the European model. See it tracking a little more north compared to the US model, which has got the center of low pressure a little deeper and instead of along and north of the Palmer Divide, it's a little south of the Palmer Divide. This would mean Wyoming and extreme northern Colorado from about Boulder to, to Wellington would up to Cheyenne, up to Casper would get the biggest snow. If this solution is right, the bigger snow would be Denver, up to Boulder, up to Fort Collins, up to Cheyenne, and maybe not as far north. This solution gets Rapid City and parts of the I-90 corridor. This system just brushes the I-90 corridor. So just these subtle little movements will make a really big difference in snowfall. Taking a look at the output from the European model, look at all the orange. The orange represents two inches of water or more, the yellow an inch or more, the blues you're getting to a half to three quarters of an inch. And you can see the European model with its more northerly track does get into Rapid City and right along that I-90 corridor, pushing up into Buffalo and Sheridan, pushing a little bit further north. But the bullseye of the storm on the European model is in this area right here 
And then some of this is going to be rain before it turns over to snow here. Now, if we were to look at the American model, look at the huge difference. It's twice as much. And also notice how much further south. If it takes a further south track, well, Rapid City doesn't get nearly as much. Look at that. Seven inches of water with this storm near Boulder. You know, that would give you seven feet of snow if that happens. But when you see a big difference between this model, the European model, and the American models, well, you have to sort of either meet in the middle or take one or the other. Right now, experience would suggest that the European model is going to be more correct. The American model notoriously over forecasts precipitation. But we'll update you this tomorrow. I think tomorrow we'll see more of a convergence of the computer modeling with these forecasted outputs of water. If we were to convert it to snow, these numbers, I think, are realistic. This is the European model snow forecast. So that 20.7 over Cheyenne would be about 21 inches of snow, about 26 inches of snow in Wheatland. As you get up there near Douglas, that's 22 inches of snow, 13, 14 inches in Denver. However, that's the European solution. The American solution, look at that, 70 inches of snow near Boulder. You're looking at feet of snow in the foothills west of Denver, up west of Boulder, up west of Fort Collins, 38 inches of snow in Cheyenne. That would be a record breaker. It's not likely that we're going to see that much snow, but the system has got a lot going for it. Tomorrow, we'll sort things out and have finer details for you. We do think this is probably closer to reality. As we take a look at the wind, we are concerned about blizzard conditions developing. See that 51, that's a 50 mile per hour wind gust in Cheyenne, 40s along the front range of Colorado and into western Nebraska. Up here along the uh, Black Hills, we could have wind gusts in excess of 50 as well. So this would lead to blizzard conditions late Saturday, Saturday night into early Sunday. I wanted to compare this incoming storm with the storm of 2003. That one was a three day storm. And also notice that the storm, the new one that's coming in is gonna take more of a northerly track. That storm was more centered near that New Mexico, Colorado border area. So it's not apples to apples with the 2003 storm, which I think is a good sort of analog to go back and look at to compare this one to. There's a big difference between the 2003 storm and the one that's coming in. The 2003 days storm was a three day event. It spanned three days, three days of upslope. This one has got two days of life in it because you see this little guy right here, this trough coming in off British Columbia and Washington and Oregon, this is by Sunday, is gonna kick out this low. It's just simple physics, simple atmospheric dynamics. This system is gonna make this one move. So this one is a two day storm, not a three day storm like we saw in 2003. So I think we're gonna have a big, big storm, but we're not gonna probably get to 2003 levels as it's looking right now. But it's certainly this will be the strongest storm we've had like this in two years at least. So in summary, it looks like southeastern Wyoming and east central Wyoming, western Nebraska, and the I-25 corridor of Colorado will be impacted the most, especially the foothills west of I-25 from Denver to Casper. As we showed you, the track is critical. For folks in western South Dakota and northeastern Wyoming along I-90 corridor, if that northerly track holds, you're under the gun. If the southerly track holds, well, you might just get brushed. And that northerly track could reduce snow amounts in the Denver area if it does track north. If it stays on a southerly track, the Denver area is going to see a lot of snow. I think Denver is going to get a lot of snow regardless, but it'll get a lot of snow if it tracks a little bit further south. Hopefully we'll have a better idea on that north-south trajectory of the storm tomorrow. Stock growers, be prepared. This is going to be a dangerous livestock and travel related storm system. We think the worst of it is going to be from midday Saturday through early Monday. That's when the heaviest snow, the strongest winds, and the coldest temperatures will combine. Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll update